Hello? Hello? Hi, is that, is that David? It is me. Hi, hi Debbie. Um, this is Sammy here, and I've got one of my uh, colleagues that's going to join us later, Clementine. Uh, but I think it's okay for us to, to start. Okay. That's Great. Yeah, so uh, quick context for this conversation. First of all, you know, uh, I think that I am super excited to talk with you. Uh, you have a very interesting background. Uh, what we're doing, we're trying to understand uh, their emergency recovery uh, space um, and, and especially understand the tools and technology that are being used by the, the responders, uh, you know, from during the crisis all the way to recovery and also understand the, the economics um, of, of how uh, this space operates. So, uh, and we're just going to keep it as a, as a conversation. I have a few questions, but uh, maybe to get us going, if you can uh, speak a little bit uh, to your background, and, and then we'll take you from there. Yeah, you have my biography uh, from the GLG uh, uh, program, yes. correct? Yes. Yes, okay. so, I do. Um, so, uh, a, a large part of my career has been in, uh, in senior leadership in uh, in emergency services, both in my career in the city of Boston and then for the state. Um, more uh, in the latter part of my career working for the state, I worked with a, a lot of uh, uh, emergency uh, situational management uh, software uh, ranging from um, uh, plume projection if we come up with releases to various situational software programs, um, including working on development for uh, one um, under uh, under Department of Homeland Security uh, with uh, with the MIT Lincoln Labs, um, and uh, so I, I'm I'm fairly I believe fairly familiar with the the, the pluses and the and the challenges for uh, this type of software, both operationally and uh, financially. Wonderful. So can you, can you tell me a little bit more about the software that you uh, you were involved with uh, in its creation? What problem were you guys trying to solve, or are you trying to solve with it? This was a uh, this is a program. It's called um, Next Generation Incident Command Program, or NICS. Um, it actually is completed and operational, although the Department of Homeland Security did not roll it out in its uh, in, in its intended format. And what it is intended to be is to be a visual uh, map-based uh, incident management tool um, that allows multiple users, it's intended to be free uh, for, for all public safety, which it is, um, and, and easy to use so that uh, um, maps can be annotated in multiple layers, rooms created, and so forth, so that uh, it, it can be Shared between agencies and and the, and the maps that was visible um, can be customized uh, for specific work groups and so forth. Um, and it was a good, pretty good program. But uh, again, the Department of Homeland Security didn't roll it out uh, properly, and so it's not gone very far. Got it. I'm I'm taking notes here. Sure. And, and and so so let me see if I can I can say that back. So the tool is some sort of web-based tool. It has a, a map capability, and then when there is an incident, uh, different agencies can look at the map, look at uh, the different information that are surfaced. They can annotate the map. They can add their own uh, information as well, uh, and, and that gives everyone the same view of the situation on the ground. Is that, is that accurate? That's accurate. Yeah, great. And, and that was built uh, internally um, at, the, at, the, at the Department of Homeland Security? No, it was built by the MIT Lincoln Labs uh, under contract for the Department of Homeland Security. So how does that work typically, those type of arrangement, public-private sector? Well, the MIT Lincoln Labs is a national laboratory, um, and um, so it's you know, 